Today is the first serious snow that we are getting for this winter and I'm lucky because there is snow, there is fog in the forest which helps have a lot of mystery and I still have those red brown or dark brown leaves uh, on the trees so it's kind of like a mix of autumn and winter and it looks great today I'll be photographing using my Canon EOS R and the 24 to 105 I'm gonna concentrate mainly on photographing panoramas in the forest and of course having the fog um, creating all the mystery and having the dark reddish leaves on the trees uh, creating the the battle between fall and uh, and winter before talking about the first panorama that I'm gonna do today let me give you a small but very useful tip when photographing panoramas because there are lots of photos that come uh, in a certain sequence and when you're going home and you're looking in Lightroom maybe you don't realize what the sequence are when when the sequence sequence sorry is starting and when it's ending so it's very useful to have a sign uh, for me it's three fingers uh, from the left when the panorama is starting and then three fingers from the right when the panorama is ending basically i'm photographing the the beginning and the end of each panorama holding uh, three fingers to the left and to the right and this way i know that between those two signs I have the sequence for a panorama. The first panorama from today is going to be roughly what you're seeing. I'm going to move uh, away from the scene. Yeah, so what you're seeing right now um, as the end of, of the scene will be the main panorama. Now when I'm photographing panoramas in the forest I try to um, have the margins of the panorama ending with some tree or some group of trees something that will hold your attention uh, over inside the panorama the technical process is very simple i do uh, a focus in the center of the panorama where i'm going to have the panorama and from there on i don't do uh, the focus anymore you can either switch your lens to manual or you can assign uh, a, a different focus button than the trigger rather than the trigger uh, okay then when I'm uh, do the overlapping of the photos I'm doing about 30% overlapping between photos and basically that's it in terms of focal length I'm using uh, a focal length above 35 usually it's 50 millimeter 70 millimeter and that gets rid of all the other problems when stitching the photos together The settings for this first panorama are 1.3 seconds, ISO 100, f11 and the focal length is almost 100 because I wanted to compress the, the field and I wanted to, uh, to capture a much wider shot. The, the, the longer the focal length you're going, the more photos you'll have to take to um, take the same, the same panorama in terms of, uh, of space. This one over here I think is going to be really interesting. You see that tree over there, it has a branch, that it's extending above the, uh, the trail and it has those dark red brownish leaves on it. So I think it's going to create an interesting contrast. I'm going to pop the saturation on it. I'm going to have it again in a panoramic format and for sure it's going to look great. In this shot I really like the way the trees look 
uh, it's I'm kind of like sitting outside the forest and I'm looking at the edge of the forest and having the fog uh, in the distance creates a separation between uh, the planes and I'm having a good feeling of depth in this image so I think it looks really great the, this hoar frost uh, on the trees also looks really, really nice. I think photographing the nature as panoramas is forgiving in terms of composition. You can kind of like overlook it just a little bit, but you still need a focus point, something interesting to look at. But still, when you're photographing panoramas, sometimes it works just, just be, because of the beauty of the image. I don't know why, but we are, tend to like panoramas a lot more, even if we don't have an interesting composition in the shot. Before photographing a panorama, I need to have somewhat of a vision about what the panorama will look like. So I'm just panning my camera from left, from left to right or right to left, and I'm kind of adjusting it so everything fits uh, inside the, the panorama. Every element that I want there should be there. Sometimes if you don't do that, you'll end up with cut out uh, elements. So you need to be extra careful. And after that, I'm doing the focus and then I'm just uh, photographing the panorama. For this shot over here, I had 0.8 seconds, f11, ISO 100, 70 millimeter as focal length. And what I liked was the trail that was going between uh, the trees and the fog in the distance. Uh, whenever I'm, I'm able to create uh, such a good separation in terms of uh, um, foreground, middle ground and background, and I'm creating that sense of depth, I take the chance and do the photo. For this one I really liked how th this tree looked and how this hoar frost and, and the, the snow is standing or sitting or whatever on its branches and I think it looks it looks so so like like a fairy tale if you want. It's an interesting it's an interesting shot, an interesting tree, an interesting focus point if you want. This was it for today. Hope you found all this useful. If you have something to add, just use the comment section below. And until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better. Bye-bye.